Mr. Mesa, since you are an experienced broadcast journalist, is it right to assume that you've covered extensive electoral processes in this country? Yes, my lord. Um, not only in this country, but abroad as well. I, I, was, I was very integral in the coverage of the U.S. elections that brought in Donald Trump. And so, yes, I have extensive experience in that area. Very well. Can the commission tap into your knowledge? So far as I can help, yes. Why not, my lord? Let's talk about electoral violence. Electoral violence. You agree with me that for some time now, our by-elections in particular are characterized by violence. Do you? Yes, my lord. A few of them. Um, Talent C. We have Tripony. We have Atiwa. We've had Ayawaso West work on. All of them had varying degrees of violence. Yes, my lord. Mr. Mesa, from your experience, what do you think are some of the causes of this violence? Well, just basically from a journalistic point of view and, and talking to people, the sense you get talking to people is, see, the, what we now know has been tagged as political vigilantism and the deep-seated mistrust that political actors have for state institutions, particularly the police. So parties normally find themselves in a position, tend to mistrust the police. And the police, as we've become to know, and what my coverage of the elections has taught us, has jurisdiction in terms of you know, providing security for elections. However, we have a situation that, uh, based on the coverage over the years, you've seen mainly parties in the position, not trusting the police. And so they, you, get to, you get to a point where the parties themselves then begin to provide their own form of security, which obviously then conflicts with state security and has led to that sort of uh, intense rivalry that in, in some cases has degenerated into outright violence, people were either maimed, in some cases, killed. Fundamentally, that mistrust for state institutions such as the police is what tends to have created this scenario where by-elections have become particularly um, full of incidents uh, of the violent nature. But you agree with me that the situation is not the same with general elections? Not quite. General elections have also recorded its own measure of violence um, in varying degrees, depending on the nature of a flashpoint. So we, time was when institutions like the West African Network for Peace Building going into an election will release a list of flashpoints and, and put institutions on notice about these flashpoints and their potential to degenerate into violence. In fact, the Electoral Commission also has a system where they, they also identify their flashpoints. And sometimes in, in, in talking to the police, they pull out, they, they share with the police what the flashpoints are. As journalists, we also are interested in the flashpoints because in deploying reporters, we also, sorry, I need to slow down again. Forgive me. Forgive me. In deploying reporters, we also look at these flashpoints and use that as a basis for our own deployment because we also want to be in the thick of the action. So we send people to these places um, so that if indeed the flashpoint means it has a potential for violence. If indeed that happens, then you can report. You can, you can bring our listeners up to speed on what happens. So in, in national elections, also there's been, there has been, <laughs> there has been um, violence also in national elections, as you've seen. Mr. Mensah, <clears throat> 
going forward, what do you suggest will be some of the solutions to this issue of electoral violence and vigilantism? It's an interesting question. I'm not an expert, um, my lord, but I would just based on talking to the political actors, talking to civil society, talking to ordinary voters, and referencing what ordinary everyday Ghanaians have told us through our everyday work, because that's what we do. We give the microphones to the ordinary people, the everyday Ghanaian who normally will not have a voice to speak, and they've had a lot to say about vigilantism, party political violence. Just this past week, we, we did a show like that where we had a citizen conversation about this. And part of the question was asked ordinary people, businessmen, communications people, generally about what they think could, could the state can do to fix the problem. What I'm going to say fundamentally are thoughts from that constituency of people. So everyday Ghanaians speaking generally about what they feel about, about the vigilantism and political violence. One of the key things these audience of ours have suggested is to depoliticize our security agencies, starting with the police. A key recommendation that I've heard from our audience to us is to give the IGP security of tenure. That's one. Even take away the power of appointment from the executive and put it in a sort of a, a commission of other security um, or people qualified, neutral people, or, uh, people other than political class. To make that appointment. I have also heard from our audience a recommendation that even the post of an IGP, just like we have in the lower ranks of the police where promotions are based on the exam and assessment, should be one that people so qualified should apply for and a competitive process used to select the very best.